Well, you knew we were going to do it, right? We had to go through the worst takes about the Queen's death. And what's remarkable, though, is it's actually a bunch of people posting their L's about the Queen and Britain. Being like, look how great she was. We suck. And it's like, that's weird for a bunch of communists. I would have thought you guys would have been more angry. But uh, but anyway, it's it's been kind of annoying. But... In a way, actually not kind of annoying. Just watching... So you've got all the world leaders, as you've just sh shown, being like, you know, the people of dignity and respect actually being dignified. And then you've got the losers. And what are their takes? Resentful, you know, mean, <laughs> jealous. I think it's right to say the losers to Britain as well. Yes. The uh, Argentinians. Oh, God. The Irish. Yeah, <laughs> it, <laughs> like, they're, they're, yeah exactly. The Spanish. <laughs> The Irish and black Twitter are just like, yes, we both suck. On um, And it's just like, okay. But there's also a distinction. Is now the time for that flex? There know? is a distinction to be made there. I have noticed Africans overwhelmingly understand and respect. Oh, I didn't say African Twitter, did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, no. Uh, Caribbean Twitter, we could call it. Uh, is, is Molding hard actually um but anyway before we start if you want to support us go to lurcities.com and check out this new article by john tangney being a conservative on campus it's very much what being a conservative on twitter is like at the moment in fact but uh, this is an excellent article obviously because john's are always excellent and there's an audio track as well if you don't want to have to read it so anyway let's begin with uh before the news was broken and there is a kind of culture in this country among the sort of millennials uh, the, the sort of millennial age sort of products of Tony Blair who don't understand why they should treat these things with a bit of dignity. And we saw this from Politics Joe, right? So um, they, they posted a joke yesterday. If you can get the first image up just so we can see it. Uh, you know, the exact moment renowned Republican Liz Truss poisoned the Queen. Now, it's not an unfunny joke, I've got to be honest, you know, because, you know, the, the news have gone out the Queen's, uh, you know, ill, and so everyone's like, oh, God, you know, this is it. She had been ill a few times previously, and yeah. fine. But this, everyone was taking this one very seriously. And as you pointed out earlier, Liz Truss indeed was a Republican when she was a Liberal Democrat, and now she's the leader of the Conservative government. Uh, but uh, but people were like, well, this is a bit bad taste, isn't it, you know? And, uh, and they were like, well, should we have waited until she's dead or what? Again, like... Aged like milk. yeah. Yeah, we, this this isn't a social contract society. We didn't vote for the Queen. Like, there's more to it than this. This is inappropriate, I have to say. Uh, and so, all we got from after her death was announced. All we got from the people of Twitter was giant L's. Just constant. I mean, this being a joke about it, but honestly, this is exactly what they were saying. I was colonized. Okay, loser. What now? You're twenty. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't care. I hate you, and I'm glad that you suffer. What do you want? You know, they, they, they like, haven't. Like, no, I know, I know. But like, even when they're like, "Oh, show me some, show me some sympathy." No, no, you're a, you're an insufferable Zuma communist. I've got no sympathy for you at all. And also, you know? one of the things to do. And yeah, exactly. It, if and, this is about me. Yeah, exactly. It, it, now of all times, you could have posted this yesterday or the day before, and I wouldn't care. I'm like, oh, that's terrible for you, you know. But now you're using it. You're trying to weaponize what you believe to be your wounds against Britain, the concept of Britain, the British public, the monarchy, and the history of this country. So like, no, no. If if that's where we're going, if that's the road we're going down, good. You suck. Get used to it. Let's begin, right? So look at this one. This, this, this is just amazing. This, this was incredible. I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. Oh dear, Uja. Oh dear. This, uh, this person uh, got the tweet deleted. Twitter were like that. <laughs> you, 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 this, this violated the Twitter rules. What rules? Who knows? What, you know? I, I don't actually think that violates the written rules. I don't think it I does. I think someone at Twitter realised, oh crap. Now is not the day. Now is not like, the day. The, the emotional <laughs> feeling, uh, yeah. I don't know what it's like in the colonies or elsewhere, but I mean, in the UK, it, this is really disgusting. Yeah. And so I imagine someone at Twitter UK was just like, right, go. No, 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 no. So. Which is good. Uh, and so, I mean, she'd continue posting other things. If you go to the next one, she's like uh, replying to someone who's like, yeah, that's 
it, you scroll up so you can see that what she's replying to. But the person is like, well, that's a hateful thing to say. She's like, I only wish my hatred had the effect on her that her monarchy had on my people. It's like, oh God, I'm hearing losers. The echoing screeches of losers throughout the ages. Is that what you want to be? Is it Uju? You want to be this just intergenerational loser? My people. My people lost. Okay. My people didn't. Now what? But also, what do you mean, my people? Uh, well, she, well, she's a, she's an American critical race theorist, so somehow the but, British monarchy is bad. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's <laughs> I, I am descendant. Of, let's be charitable and say she is descendant of American slaves. She has some kind of uh, you know, victim points. It's like the, the hatred of my people. No, it doesn't make any sense. Like you're. Hang on, now, I've got the King of Benin on the phone. <laughs> oh, he says suck it. Oh, sorry, I don't know what. I don't know what to tell you. Kelly Badenoch's just like <laughs> <Yeah>. loser. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, loser. What do you want? You know. Oh. But th this person is a professor of applied linguistics, anti-racist, anti feminist, blah blah blah. Right. And uh, and weirdly enough, it was Jeff Bezos that drew attention drew attention to this person because he retweeted her, being like. Is this someone who's supposedly making to make the world, working to make the world better? I don't think so. Wow. It's like, okay, Mr. Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Monarchist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> but uh, she works at a university, and the university even came out and denounced her, which is remarkable. Uh, if you can go to the next one, you can see the uh, university being like, well, we don't condone the offense of an objectionable messages posted by this black nationalist radical in response to the death of Queen Elizabeth II because it would look bad. Yeah, not because they have any ideological problems with it. Well, that's exactly what Leo posted underneath, actually. He was like, don't gaslight us. You hired her exactly because of the views and values she shared today. Don't pretend you find these views unappealing now that the death of a monarch has made them temporarily unfashionable. Take some ownership. That's a great statement by Leo. Yeah, that is, a, that is actual gold. Yeah, that is exactly. That's pure gold, right? Uh, anyway, so I thought we'd go to... Um, Nigerian royalty next. <sighs> for, for people who don't know. Uh, so this is Dr. Shola. Uh, Dr. Shola is very persistent on wikipedia.com mm. to, to hide her own origins. People have updated it many a times, showing her tweets where she boasts about being descended from Nigerian royalty. But since she's become a massive left-wing activist in the UK, essing on the royal family... It's unfashionable. She's been trying to hide it. Mm. But isn't that interesting? That, that Suddenly her attacking Queen Elizabeth, well, it's, it's fellow royals of a certain class. Because, I mean, my family isn't in any way related to the monarchy. I'm not descendant of a king somewhere. But Dr. Schuller is. And so she's like, yeah, look at that victorious monarchy over there. I wish our monarchy had kicked ass like their monarchy. No, Dr. Schuller, unfortunately it didn't. Unfortunately, your monarchy sucked. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> But uh, I love this, right? No whitewashing the Queen's legacy. You can't revere her as a global leader and not acknowledge her as a colonizer queen of British Empire. So, oh dear, this the, the envy coming out here. You know, Doctor, if only I was the colonizer queen of the Nigerian Empire. That's what I'm hearing, right? She had no credibility on systemic racial inequality, which she didn't stand out against but benefited from. It's like, well, she was a decolonizer. Like it was under it was under her tenure that the British Empire was decolonized. So what possible place to complain do you have? I mean, as I mentioned, I can only think of one place that we did colonize under her rule, and it was Rhodesia, because the Rhodesian government asked us to do it so that we could hold free and fair elections, so it could immediately be decolonized to become Zimbabwe. Yes. But like, that's the one act of colonization it was to decolonize somewhere. At best. <laughs> if you can even really consider that an act of colonization. Right. Nonsense. But anyway, so Doc, Doc Schuller continues, of course. Uh, Britain is the great country today because of her, says Liz Truss. Oh, okay. Go on, Doc Schuller. The Queen can't be the reason for Britain's greatness, but not the reason for atrocities. As colonizer queen and doing nothing about systemic racism today, people can like her for one and dislike her for the other. So, well, a, that is actually contradictory, but it just doesn't make any sense, Doctor. You, and again, like, sorry, what's the official title of Nigerian royalty? Maybe I should use that for Dr. Shola. Her Royal Highness. Her Royal Highness, Dr. Shola Moz Shog Bamimu. Uh, but there's something interesting about those two examples, that university mm. and this one, which is that any other day of the year, any other day of the century, frankly, we have this problem. The, the left dominate the cultural space mm. in every possible institution. When it comes to the monarchy, this is the one place in England, and we had it with the Jubilee, Hmm. Where when the leftists do their shrieking nonsense, 
everyone disavows it. Everyone yeah. shuts it down. It's like, we have nothing to do with that. Please don't say we have anything to do with this. Yeah. Whereas any other day, she could have tweeted some crap like this about colonizing oh, universities. Oh, yeah, she, and she would have done. Whatever. And the university would have actually shaken her hand and given her a grand. Oh, yeah. And be like, yes, please come work for us. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from Dr. Schola. Uh, when have black folks ever gotten the chance to mourn? Because British people have got two weeks off to mourn because the Queen had died. It's like, well, that actually does include black people in Britain. They actually get two weeks off too, or 10 days or whatever it is. And no one gets a day off, actually. Oh, well. Uh, she's thinking days off work. She's a moron. Yes, uh, I was going to say, I didn't actually, I'm not actually aware that anyone gets days off work. Like, so the, the rule is that we are meant to get a bank holiday if it's announced by the palace for the funeral and for the coronation, of course. Right, okay. Not the days of mourning. No. So this person, again, knows nothing. Br brilliant academic research by Dr. <laughs> Jem M. Jackson uh, here. I'm an academic and I can't even do <laughs> Google searches. So. I could have looked up the Wikipedia page, but I didn't. But uh, but I love the way, the, the idea that it's like, yeah, so all of the British people get the days off to mourn and black people get back into the mines. I don't know. What, like, <laughs> what, what does she think is going on here? Yeah, London's yeah. still at work. We're all actually just partying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but then the, the, there's a Twitter account called Leftism for You, which gave us just a, a selection of just some of the just dumbest and worst takes, right? The worst part about the death of Queen Elizabeth is that Donald Trump hasn't been arrested for espionage, sedition, or treason. It's like, really, now's the time, is it? Just There's a thing about Yankees and the monarchy, isn't there? There is, and it's just deranged. I mean, if you can just scroll down through this thread, you can just see it's just, like, bad take after bad take. And it's like, the Queen isn't going to see your jokes about her, but your friends who are 150-year-old genocidal racist British colonists will. What? Because it's just nonsense. Name the person you're talking about, Jeremiah. Name the genocide. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Like, yeah. It's just nonsense. No, it's, but it's just, you know, losers posting their L's. Oh, we, we got crushed by the British. Yeah, you did. Cry harder. Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not a racial thing either. Yeah. They have these black nationalists trying to make it about race. Yeah. But you'll notice that it's, you know, the Irish and the Argentinians and, the, you know, everyone else. What did the Argentinians post? <laughs> there was a guy I saw on Argentinian TV. He opened a bottle of champagne and was drinking it and, like, trying to make a big thing about it, trying to be mm -hmm. super high energy. But you could tell it was so forced. Mm -hmm. Like, this is utter cope that you just... You're a loser. Well, why don't you go and open that uh, bottle on Las Malvinas, mate? You know, <laughs> again, just like... <laughs> Apply for a visa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, sorry, losers. I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, you suck. But anyway, Britain coloni colonized Africa, didn't you know? I did know. Let's be honest. Britain violently colonized Africa. They brutally murdered our ancestors. They brutalized our mothers and fathers. Yeah, we did. When they were like, we're going to trade slaves. We're like, Shh, not under our watch. Uh, <laughs> or if they tried to kill us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> Like, the if we just killed everyone we met, there wouldn't be any black people. <laughs> like, that's how that works. <laughs> 99 red balloons playing in the background. <laughs> just, this is the true legacy of Queen Elizabeth as far as Africa is concerned. Right. When we appeared in Rhodesia, when Cecil Rose turned up, the wheel hadn't been invented. <laughs> like, the locals actually hadn't invented, like, a wheelbarrow. And when we left, there were jet planes. Yep. But, you know... Our evil civilization was destroying their glorious nothing. Good thing we returned to hell where we came from, <laughs> isn't it? You know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, again, like the, again, just massive L being posted. Just like, oh, we we suck, and you guys kicked our asses. Okay, fine. Moving on. Down with colonialism. I love this so much. Like it's it's literally like international, like international L day. The, the Irish, Arab, the, Afri the Africans, the Arabs, and the people of the Caribbean were all massacred under the colonial realm of Elizabeth. No, they weren't. They weren't, actually. But no. let's, let's, assume, let's just take it. Why are there okay. so many Arabs? Okay. <laughs> Fucking L. What? D what? D but also, I, I love seeing Arabs do this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's so Oh, yeah, the Arabs. Oh, the poor Arabs. <laughs> Oh, God. What if they ever oppressed Arab. anyone? Oh, God. You know. You've oppressed the Africans. Oh, don't look at us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know blacks, black people in all of Arabia. Wait, what did that happen? You took a lot of slaves. Why are there none there? Yeah. Like, really? Just, just get Googling that. Yeah, you, but, you um, castrated them all. But I love But this. also, how's that United Arabia going? Brilliantly. How is it that there are... That, just how is it that there was, you know, Arabic spoken in Spain and India? How did that happen? No, anyway. Right. Uh, so they say, you know, we will never forget. We will resist till all our lands are liberated from the shackles of colonialism. So, what, 
What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're gonna have to liberate all of North Africa from the colonialism of the Arabs. So. Sure, but like, okay, from British colonialism. Okay, that happened about fifty years ago. So, I mean, I mean, maybe the Pitcairn Islands. He's upset about still. British Virgin Islands, maybe? Maybe, but didn't mention them. <laughs> no. You know? They don't feel very oppressed either. They keep doing referendums and keeping us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but then the next one, of course. Uh, and I love the people under the boot of Elizabeth. It's like, really, no one thought that. No one thought it. It's just so artificial, right? But anyway, the next one, racism was outlawed in England in the 60s and it's been allowed to thrive. So why should black and brown people mourn? Um, I, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, in the, in the 60s, you couldn't say the N-word, whereas now, in the more liberal times... <laughs> it's just constant. <laughs> the BBC is like those N-words in Africa. You know. Yeah, it's no, it, 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 it's amazing. And just like, it's just so delusional. It's like, no one thinks this. No one thinks this. But also, again, you just make yourself sound really incompetent and pathetic. But again, any other day of the year, these people would be taken seriously by the mainstream. Well, incidentally, any other day of the year, they wouldn't have said something like this. And we've got a great example from Trevor Sinclair. If you can get to the next one. Uh, from 2020? Just two years ago, it was like, our queen looked so fragile when addressing the nation earlier, but she was so genuine with hum humility. Her majesty still inspired the United Kingdom. Right. So this... Two years later... Is utter <laughs> performance by this... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Everything about this is performative. Because, of course, Elizabeth didn't reign over a giant world-spanning empire. She was the queen of the decolonial period. And now they're all independent, and so their problems are all indigenous problems. They're your own problems. If your country sucks because it's full of... Uh, Corruption. Yes. Violence. Socialism. And, you know, just... The, Constant infighting. Yeah, lack of rule of law, dangerous streets, all these other things that, you know, have arrived now that the British have gone back to hell. Um, you know, that you, you can sit there going, well, this is the British fault. It's like, mm, but it's not, though. Mm. You know, actually take some responsibility for once in your life. Like we left you... Africa, Arabia, and Ireland. Like we left you with trains. Yeah. And a working service. Yeah, civil and service. As yeah. one... Af Hospitals. As one Chinaman in a very famous documentary yes. found it. He turned back up and went, they left you these things and you destroyed them. We didn't even have these in China and now we have bullet trains. It's also tiresome. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next one. She was the queen of many African, Caribbean and Asian nations in our, grandparents, in our parents' generation and is still a leader of the Commonwealth. Her family oversaw the transatlantic slave trade. Her wealth comes both directly and indirectly from screwing black and brown people globally. It's literally it. It's the screwing black and brown people fund. The Queen Elizabeth fund of <laughs> <Donation>. slavery. <laughs> donate, yeah. please. <laughs> exactly, yeah, donate, please. Just, just this bears no resemblance to reality, you know? And right. it's, it's like, okay, well, I tell you what, Britain should completely repent its uh, interaction with this transatlantic slave trade and uh, restore to Benin that which was taken. <laughs> um, I mean, the, Li Li the Libyans did. Yeah, they, they, did. they took that back. Yeah, they did. I think the Congo's still at it. It's going great in Africa. Now that those evil colonialists aren't there. Anyway, next one. Uh, Africa, of course, was a very wealthy place. It wasn't tribesmen who hadn't invented the wheel. It was actually... Um, Wakanda? Yes, Obviously, Wakanda. The Cecil Rhodes turned up and found Wakanda. Yes. And was like... Oh. And then, quote, Britain stole untold trillions from Africa. I don't think we did. I actually don't think that was true. <sighs> you didn't have untold trillions there, Adam H. Johnson. Obviously a native African name. <laughs> you know, I can see the, the uh, skin tone from here. Yeah. It doesn't... I, <laughs> go on. This argument. It's the, nonsense. The, the, ponce, the most possible steel man of it you could ever hear and you get it from robert conquest yeah. just laying out it was like right okay so the argument is that we turned up and we built mines that they didn't have yep. so they actually couldn't access any of the raw materials below the earth but we yep. could and then we took those raw materials uh not a lot of them on a national scale now that we found out there's so much more there uh chinese are doing that for us do you know however because we took those raw materials that's the money we took fine uh what did we spend to get them Mm. It's it's not even worth the price we paid for the garrisons mm. of these countries. Well, the, the reason that we don't we, we decolonize because we just couldn't afford the empire because the empire cost us money. Like it's all documented because yeah. if, if we, we were had money, why would we not stay? We, because we had writing, right? <laughs> and and so we wrote records <laughs> and we actually know exactly how much the empire cost in taxes every year. And weirdly, the British people were prepared to pay because they thought it was a good thing to have around. 
that was why we had this empire, right? Well, but what I find really interesting of charity. What I find really interesting about this, right, is that almost everywhere in sub-Saharan Africa, wealth is valued in cows. That's how wealth is valued, right? How many cows you own. Sorry, go back, John. Right, we're just going to talk about this for a second, right? So if we stole untold trillions from Africa, right? That's a lot of cows. That is a lot of cows, right? I mean, I mean, literally, you buy your wife by providing cows. This is literally what African tribes still do in the modern era, right? And so when we turned up, we must have been like, right, look at, look at these herds that they've got. <laughs> like, how many millions of cows did we ship back to Britain? <laughs> Like, I want to know. I want to know. The movable wealth of the Africans was in cows. I'm not even joking. Right? I, yeah, I, I think if you go to South Sudan, like Miles does, you will actually find that they live like they did. Yes. They, they didn't actually yes. have some Wakanda beforehand that they yes. remember. There's cave drawings of like, oh, yes. this is what we used to be before the evil British turned up. Yes. With their devil horns. And uh, like the, 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 the I've, I remember years ago hearing this, apparently there's, a, I think it was Maasai, story where basically they justify stealing other people's cows by saying well look all the cows on earth belong to us and they were stolen from us and so we're actually stealing them back and it's our big brain very clever but um <laughs> like so yeah the, the the cow transit system from africa to britain is actually very unexplored in uh, our historical documents just missing yeah for some reason so anyway let's go on to the communist party don't know why we allow a communist party, but uh, us and them, the vast gap in wealth between ourselves and British royals is growing by the year. I can't believe the royals are wealthier than I am. Uh, <laughs> Shocking, really. I yeah. thought they'd be poorer than us. Yeah, exactly. You've got the Queen and Dr. Schola and then the peasants at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no longer is Britain's economy able to fund the royals' employment support allowance. Oh, there we go. Thank you. But foreigners who might not know, uh, the economic argument is complete bunk as well on the monarchy. They own so much land, they make so much money from it, and we actually get a lot of that as the taxpayers mm. from them, because one of their kings went bankrupt, and so made a deal that we give them an allowance and we get a bunch of the rent. Mm. And if they went as a private family again, who were just, you know, Mr. and Mrs., they would actually make far more money, mm. just on the rent on the land alone. And I can only imagine just how much in tourism Buckingham Palace brings in like not even like people yeah. going like just you, spending money in the area because that's hard to measure you don't even have to get to yeah. it before you even figure out actually no we're making money it must this. be so much money and then even then right it's the the cultural prestige of having an institution that goes back in an unbroken lineage almost apart from a very brief period where oliver cromwell was doing puritan things to alfred the great like this is a thousand two hundred years you can't like, you know, you can't make that up. You can't fabricate that. You can't put a price on such a thing. And so, like, you know, these losers who are like, oh, we want a republic. And I was watching the Vara Media stream and some retard, like, soup chatted in. I want a republic of the UK. You want a republic of the United Kingdom. Din, 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 din. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> At what point is he going to get that? Exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, the hosts on the Vara Media, like, yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? It's like, idiots. Anyway, BBC4 was apparently the worst, though. Because BBC4, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a Radio 4. <clears throat> it's uh, where the, the snobbish Blairites listen and think they're better than everyone. Uh, apparently, someone was listening to it and just tweeted out a bunch of uh, statements that they heard. BBC Radio 4 is busy telling us about how the monarchy is at odds with society, which values equality, diversity, and inclusivity. So the monarchy is at odds with posh communists. Yeah, good. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Uh, by design, almost. <laughs> it's, it's not odds with, you know, the millions of people who are going to go and see the Queen in state and going to go give their flowers and show their respects. It's not odds with the kingdom we live in, <laughs> but, you know. Uh, the monarchy is about white inherited privilege. No. no. It's definitely it, about privilege. It, yeah, it, it's about blood privilege, yeah. which is not about being white, yeah. because why am I not entitled to a place in it then? Exactly. Where's my crown? Uh <laughs> Why does Dr. Shola have a crown? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's this white privilege helping yeah, black people? <laughs> yeah. it, believe it or not, black people have kings and queens too. Uh, yeah. It's at odds with our multi-faith, multi-ethnic society. Uh, great work from our national broadcaster, of course, this person tweets. Uh, they, Defund the BBC? Yeah, abs absolutely. absolutely. If, if, if there has been a break with the past now, okay, the BBC can go. You know, If the empire's over and that's it, the BBC can go. We don't need an imperial broadcaster anymore. No, we do not. And uh, we we get the next one, which is a decolonization bad from the New York Times. It's like, wait, what? Decolonization bad? 
We should not romanticize her era. No, no, that's li- I mean, that's literally what they're saying, right? Maya Janosoff, a professor of history at Harvard, says we should not romanticize her era. The queen helped obscure a bloody history of decolonization whose proportions and legacies have yet to be adequately acknowledged. So Harvard isn't a university anymore. Imagine having a professor of history that thinks that. Well, I mean, what are we supposed to do? It's like, okay, the Indians and Pakistanis are massacring each other. Right, but they didn't want us in charge. We, we literally said, bye. Yeah, it's not our responsibility to... No, you should have sent the army back in. Yeah, and, and recolonize them so they didn't kill each other. So what? I've actually had this. Um, Idi Amin's taken over. Oh, well, sorry, it has that my problem. I've met some people who have Indian heritage who have argued to me that the British did this. And I literally just look at them in awe. They're like, we weren't there. They're like, yeah, that was the problem. I'm like... <laughs> so no. what was wrong with us owning it to begin with then exactly that's the thing so yeah well you know you actually have a responsibility to come here and make sure that keep the peace is kept it's like well we did we, do that and then you whine trusted. <laughs> you complain about it huh. but uh but i thought um uh george prime had a great response to all of this all of this george alexopoulos fantastic cartoonist go follow him by the way uh, everything he does is brilliant but uh, he's got a great great couple of tweets here empire bad bitch your life is dope and you wrote this on twitter in english with your university education if it wasn't for that evil empire you'd be carrying a jug of water on your head right now <laughs> I just, i'm sick of it yeah boom absolutely done uh he goes on but uh, but we'll leave that on there if you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the lotus heaters you can go to lotusheaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site such as the contemplation series this one on josh's weird psychological roundup and if you want to find out what else josh is putting out you can follow him on getter at at josh underscore firm on getter thank you and goodbye